Hey, it's some old guy coding again today. And, you know, before we start the actual main part of the video here, I just wanted to apologize. I was kind of tired and was late and fatigued uh, when I record this uh, part that will follow. And I often try to use the wrong words like a moron. Sorry. <laughs> it was part of getting old. Um, but I did want to preface this by saying that, you know, if this is your first CNC rodeo, uh, I'm going to talk about dual end stops. And, you know, that's not required. Uh, you know, if you're doing this for the first time, skip the end stops entirely. You have a perfectly usable CNC machine. There's, there's no magic in the end stops other than I want to investigate a few automated automation options. Um, you'll have a perfectly good CNC machine. You'll be able to repeat the same job over and over again as long as you, at the end of the job, leave the head in the same position you started then you just replace the material and, and go again. So you don't have to do this and it certainly does complicate the build and uh, it uh, causes additional frustrations in trying to get the system up and working. So I just wanted to say that. But I am going to do the dual end stops. I've done this my third build of one of Ryan's, uh, ah, fourth if you count the Zen XY, but a third CNC machine build of uh, Ryan's design that I'm doing. And uh, I, I love Ryan's design, it's just great. But I want to do a little bit more, you know, so I'm, I'm going to do the end stops, the uh, dual end stops. <clears throat> so, one thing different that you'll see from other people, like out on the forum, a lot of people are zeroing their Z axis up. Well, I specifically built my table here that has space on either end of the two foot by four foot, you know, it's two foot wide, uh, four foot long uh, works, work surface, uh, scrap, uh, see I'm stumbling for words again, um, waste board, I got a four foot long waste board, and I had built on room on either side of that purposefully so that I could take my uh, carriage and move it all the way over and drop it down um, so that, uh, you know, when I'm done with the job, I can turn off the steppers. I don't have to wait for it to time out and fall on one side, not the other, because there's a little grime on the other side. So it's, it's something I wanted to do, and it's not required to use this guy. Um, you know, you have a lot of fun and use out of your lowrider without any end stops. So, uh, you know, if you check the forums, uh, maybe uh, some some posts say 90% of the people don't use end stops. So don't feel obligated to follow me in this path. But, you know, and I'll talk about some of the other options as we go through it too. But for now, I'm going to talk about dual end stops. And, uh, you know, you see my, my room is really a mess now because I've been working very hard on this. But let's jump back a, a week or two and, and check out the video then that I did on doing the dual end stops. And please forgive me when I stutter and have breaks. And I tried to edit most of that out. But I'm not going to go back and redo it from scratch. So <laughs> just bear with me. All right. Thanks for watching. Here it comes. Okay, hey, it's some old guy coding again today. And today it's time to start talking about end stops on uh, this lowrider 2 that I'm building. You now people are either for or against end stops but you know I, they're useful in automation of, of a job. I mean if you're just going to run a job off in the middle of the uh, bed uh, that's fine but if you're going to do some increased automation uh, repeating jobs uh, you know production runs sometimes it might be useful to have uh, some end stops. Uh, to bring the system back to a, a known position. <clears throat> so uh, what we have here are some interesting parts. We have some of the um, cable uh, or the uh, uh, belt ties um, off of Ryan's site. But I've modified these a little bit to take a uh, eight millimeter screw. I wonder if it'll take a uh, 5 sixteenths. Let's find out. A much larger 5 sixteenths than necessary, but let's see if it'll fit in there too. Yeah, it sort of looks like it might. It might be a little snug, that's all. So you could use a 5 sixteenths. You could even, uh, you know, drill the hole out a little bit larger. <clears throat> but I had these uh, M8s sitting around. You might want something with a hex head rather than uh, a hole in the top there where, uh, you know, this little stepper motor 
thing you might get caught. So just a thought. But this is what I'm going to go with initially here. And there's some other interesting parts here. We've got uh, uh, this in a mirrored form that uh, will hold a stepper uh, or will hold the micro switch uh, so that we could detect an end stop. And if you look really carefully here, you might be able to see the shape of a little uh, micro switch there. And of course, these are the two holes. You may have to drill those out to mount them. I'm using an M2 um, screw, M2 by 10 about. So these guys will, uh, make sure I get this right. Yep. That guy will mount uh, like that on there. And then this will mount onto the um, side panels. And I'll show you how that works in a second. <clears throat> then we have this guy here that's really an interesting piece. And you know, let me let me uh, res go step back by saying um, Ryan didn't include any parts in the basic uh, lowrider setup, at least none that I've seen that uh, are for um, doing end stops. But if you take a look on Thingiverse, there's a couple of different varieties. But I want to go off and do my own thing here. So first, let's take a look at the long axis. I call them long axis and short axis rather than X and Y because, you know, some people have those switched around. Now, here's the piece here, the, uh, the uh, wire. Here's the piece that we attach the belt to, and that's going to be attached to the side of the uh, thing that this is running on. So when this comes up here, it will just go ahead and uh, push that switch in. And it's adjustable by uh, the length uh, that we have out here. So I think that'll work good. And of course, uh, we have a mirrored set. Um, let me find that mirrored one. <clears throat> here it is. This is the, the mirrored version right here that will go on uh, the other side of uh, the machine on the other panel. But it also has to go on this side. You know what I'm saying. Uh, they both have to stay on the same side wherever zero is going to be. <clears throat> I'll take a look at the next part here. This is the part installed uh, for uh, the Z-axis zero. So there's a switch in there. I haven't ran any wires up to it yet. And let me show you how that works. So this is the piece that uh, fits on this upper part. And without putting it all together here, what's going to happen, no actually this one is all together, <laughs> this one uh, kind of fits right in there, so let me let me put this guy up a little bit so you can see, this one fits right into one of those little uh, triangle slots, the one on the left of uh, this uh, uh, axis, uh, of the part that goes up and down. And it just slides in there, and then you could glue it down to uh, be the right distance away to uh, hit uh, the switch in here. It's right in there. And of course, <clears throat> on the other side, you're going to want to do it in the same position. Um, so it, when it's flipped around, it, it'll look like it's flipped around. <laughs> just as long as these two match up. Uh, this one won't go in any place else. It won't fit in over there, so you can't do that. Can't get it wrong. Just do it the same way on both sides. So, and there's that. <clears throat> so we'll set that over there, and they're all adjustable. Now, finally, we have to do the um, short axis zeroing. And in this case, it's just going to be a single uh, single switch because there's no uh, dual associated with the short axis. It'll just be a single setup. And I've got one right up here. Let me grab it. Let me find that other part. It's probably still in the uh, doohickey over here, probably. I don't know. So where this guy fits in over here, <coughs> this this little panel here screws down to the side and uh, will hit against the 611 uh, plate. Actually, it hits against one of the, the, the brackets, the 3D printed brackets. Um, and you can adjust the distance out by uh, using these screws. Uh, these screws can be a little tough to uh, adjust if you don't have a ball and wrench. All I did was uh, drill a little, I believe it's a 3 uh, 316 or something like that hole right into the plastic here. 
and then put a couple screws in. Be careful that uh, the screw doesn't uh, go into the um, orifice here that uh, will have the <clears throat> will have the uh, stainless steel. It can't go through. So you might have to use a little shorter one up on top. So yeah, so there's that set up, and that just hits against uh, one of the brackets um, that uh, the bearings are on. So, so we'll see how that works out. <clears throat> one more thing I wanted to show you is that on uh, Ryan's website, on his shop, he has, um, of course, the jumper cables or the extender, extender things that you can buy, extender wires. And if you buy the ones that are set up for for dual zeroing, uh, it's, he's got a great cable here, uh, one that will go to the uh, stepper motor, of course, and one that will go to the uh, minus and sense of the <coughs> um, switch input for the end stop. Now this will plug right into the stepper motor cable on this end. <coughs> I'll have to build a little cable to connect over here and solder it to the uh, pins of the uh, normally closed and common pins on the uh, little micro switch. So it'll be all uh, modular, very nice. I really like those cables that he's made there. And one more thing, I just wanted to show you the switches that I'm using. Um, you can get ones that don't have the little roller ball on the end if you want. It really doesn't matter. Uh, there are different sizes. Um, I'm not sure what actually the size of this one is, but uh, there is a screenshot or an image of the package. All right. I'm not going to do any wiring on this one or uh, do any setup of the, of the software yet. I just wanted to talk in general about the uh, end stops and my solution. So uh, thanks for watching. If you've uh, enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe. And, uh, you know, if you're uh, interested in helping this channel out, because all these plastic and parts uh, cost money, unfortunately, it would be great if you could support me on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Every dollar is appreciated greatly. So, thanks for watching.